Celebrate Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, you sound alive this morning.
Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. Bless him. Bless him. Be your name. Be your name. Amen. Amen. Blessed be your name. <clears throat> Sing like a minute. Uh, Hi, girls. Don't sit down. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
majesty. This is praise the Lord. Yes, amen. such a good God, such yes, a faithful you, God. Lord, we ask you to just bless each and every one that's here. Yes, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Welcome to Lucerne Valley Community Church. Glad you're all here this morning. Amen. Amen. All six of you. Everybody awake? Glad yeah. you're here this morning. Morning. Hey, morning. All right, that's better. Glad to have you all here. Glad to have you all out there as you watching us online. The Lord is good. Amen. Yes, amen. Hey, we get to celebrate a lot of things. One of them is Pentecost Sunday. Anybody know what Pentecost Sunday is all about? Yeah. Yep. Everybody say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah. What God promised. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah, and that's what we're celebrating. God giving you the Holy Spirit. What good does the Holy Spirit do for you? Oh, he does a whole lot. Well, some of you need to come to Bible study. <laughs> All right. How about changing you into the very likeness of Christ, moment by moment, step by step? God's promise is to all who believe, to you, to your children, to many as as far off, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. To many as as far off, the Holy Spirit has promised to you. And because of Him, we can be more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. No matter what you face in. We're here to tell you this morning, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're dealing with, God loves you. Amen. God wants to love you. Amen. How I many you know God's always loved you? Amen. Sometimes we have a hard time receiving his love. Yes. We don't feel worthy. We feel guilty. We feel shame. But I'm here to tell you this morning, we're going to talk about it, that God loves you and he wants nothing more for you to love him back. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Yes, amen. amen. God wants to love you. Yes. What I mean by that is, because God already loves you, what I mean, accept God's love yes. amen. that he has for you. Accept it. 
He loves you. He wants nothing more than to wrap his arms around you. That's right. Amen. Well, I'm going to preach that later. Right now, it's announcements. <laughs> so if you'd like to support us, we're here in Lucerne Valley. Lucerne Valley Community Church out there online. If you'd like to support us, it's P.O. Box 7. 88. Okay. P.O. Box what? 788. No, 923. 956. 956. 923. 956. You're going to get me confused here pretty soon. That's about eight or nine zip codes out there. All, of a sudden. all right, Ralph has a few words of wisdom for us this morning. <laughs> Lord, let him be wise. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Among whom you also are the call of Jesus Christ, to all who are love of God in Rome, called as saints and grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. Amen. Amen. Okay, you know, when I first came to the Lord, I said, I found God. That's not true. God was seeking me out. That's right. Amen. I finally opened the door, but he was knocking to, for him to come in. But I didn't find God. God was seeking me. And uh, I always thought that I found him. I'm, I'm the one that found God. I was totally wrong. And I'm wrong a lot of times. <laughs> Amen. 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 Okay. <laughs> <That's like prayer. laughs> okay, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that yes. you did open my eyes, Lord, and you came in when I opened up the door, Lord, and I thank you for that, my God, and I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in here, Lord, because I am going to go out there and preach the gospel yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Rob. It's hard for me not to say something about Ralph because he is a billboard for what God can do for you. That's no right. matter how many years you've been in bondage or whatever else, God can set you free. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then he can use you for his glory. We were talking about it this morning out there by the door. You know, there's a lot of times people that have had the worst situations, horrible situations. God used them in a mighty way for his glory. That's a, like a billboard or an advertisement for God's mercy and his grace. That's if right. he can do that for Ralph, who couldn't even read a year ago. Now he's up here telling you about God's word. He's taught himself to read. Well, it's amazing. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's a miracle. But so are you. That's right. And so are you out there. A lot of you out there online. You're miracles. God loves you. He just wants to love you this morning. I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt. If you're listening outside. Or if you're in here today. I want you to know before you leave this place. God just wants to love you. Amen. Let him love you. Yes. Accept his love. That's right. Amen. No matter what you're going through. Amen. Yes. God is Amen. love. And he Amen. loves you. Amen. Now we have a special. I believe. <laughs> i 
taking care of her mother a great deal of time. But we have her today, so we're going to put her to work. Amen! So she and I are going to do a song now. And children, you may escape. So you don't have to put up with all this. Give those children a hand as they leave. Huh? Yeah. And we'll pray for the teachers in the back room, too. All right. Gloria, did we decide it over here? For what? So my privilege to have Edna with me today. So we're going to do a little song, and we're going to do another talent of hers that maybe you haven't seen before, sign language. So I'm going to sing a song, and she's going to do the sign language. Okay? Fire it up, Maestro. Nice and loud so I can hear it. <laughs> Track four.
I just feel like you just need to know that God loves you. Yes. You may be in a dark place. You may be in a lot of pain. You may feel angry, betrayed, maybe unforgiven, lost and undone, guilty, ashamed, confused, no hope, no joy, no place, no peace. Just emptiness, void of all hope. But I'm here to tell you that God Almighty, He who stepped out on the edge of time, who spoke through space and said, let there be, He loves you. Amen. And He wants nothing more than for you to accept His love. Thank you, Lord. And to love Him back. Yes. yes thank you. I want you to know this morning that He knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. He not only knows that, but he knows you by name. It matters to him about you. He cares for you. He went to the cross for you. He rose again for your justification for you. He went through the pain and the agony for you. He not only knows you, he knows you by name. He knows where you're at. But he also knows what you need. That's yeah. right. Amen. You may not. You may feel empty. You may feel completely confused and frustrated with all that's taken place. Maybe you've had a tragedy. Maybe an illness. Maybe a death. The Lord knows our world is full of misery right now. Yeah. But God loves you. Amen. And He is your peace. Yes, amen. He always has been. Yes. All you need to do is let Him love you. Yeah. Let Him wrap His big arms around you and rock you in the bosom of Abraham. Yes, amen. He loves you. Father, as we look at your word now, yes. we just ask for your Holy Spirit which we celebrate today, and we should celebrate all the time. For he is you. He is a manifested power of yourself, working within us, changing us into your very likeness. So we thank you for that, Lord. Let us find comfort in that. Comfort that we know that the very power of God Almighty, Jehovah God, resides in the heart and life of every Christian. 
Bring a peace in the midst of the storm. Let them feel your arms wrapped around them. Give the body a big hug this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There's a story told. We're going to focus on the 19th chapter of Luke this morning. It's in your bulletin. But the story told really starts in the 18th chapter with a blind man sitting on a curb, I call it. Actually, sitting on a roadside. The phrase is used in both chapters of two different individuals, both the blind man and Zacchaeus that Jesus was just passing by. <laughs> See, he was on his way to Jerusalem where he'll be crucified or he'll be tried and he'll be crucified. He'll be mocked and he'll be shamed. He'll be beaten. And he knows all of this, but on his way to Jerusalem, on his way to the crucifixion, he's passing by a blind man who's outside the city of Jericho. And there's a big commotion, but the blind man is sitting there begging on the side of the road. And he said, what's it all about? And he said, it's Jesus of Nazareth, the crowd tells him. Jesus is passing by this way. And he said, blessed thou son of David, have mercy on me. And he said, shh, it's Jesus. It's a time to be quiet. Church, it's not the time to be quiet. That's right. It's a time to cry out to the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says that he cried all the louder. And he said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, among the crowd, above the crowd, and through the crowd, heard the cry, heard the sincerity of the hungry heart the needed heart. And the scripture says that he stood still. Did you know that God would stand still for you? Yes, amen. Jesus stood still and he quieted the crowd. And he commanded, didn't ask, commanded him to be brought to him. And they brought the blind man to him. And he said, what can I do for you? What can God do for you? You see, Jesus knew his heart, knew what he really wanted. And he said, my sight, that I may see. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Amen. Blind, physically, yes. But blind spiritually, yes, I was blind, but now I see Amen. amazing grace of God. I was blind. Now he can see Jesus in a different light. He sees Jesus in a different way. And now he's shouting and praising God and becomes a cheerleader for Jesus. Amen. Now Jesus, that happened outside the city of Jericho. Now he's passing into the city of Jericho. You see, Jesus is always passing by. How many of you know he's passing by this morning? Amen. Amen. Even to you folks out there online watching, he's passing by with you right now. He's present. He's present to the beggar on the side of the road crying out for help. He's there. He's available. And he will silence the whole world to minister to your need if you're sincere. And honest to him. Jesus is coming now into Jericho. And it so happened that there'd be a man there that needed the Lord. Of course, he was just curious. Some of you may be curious. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho in the very chapter 19, verse 1. Now behold, there was a man named Zacharias, who was a chief tax collector. He wasn't just a tax collector. Matthew was also a tax collector. But he was a chief tax collector, which means he was a bigger crook. <laughs> See, in the Jews' custom, they felt that anybody who worked for the Romans was a turncoat, was a thief. And they were had to, they were forced to pay tribute to Rome. And so they hired their own people. And Zacchaeus was one of these turncoats, not popular with his own people, thought to be a traitor, thought to be a cheat, 
a liar. And he was a cheap tax lawyer, so he was a big cheat and a big liar. But he was also very rich. Wonder how we got that way. <laughs> and he was rich, but he had a problem. He had a hunger to see the Lord. You see, he had heard of the miracles. Maybe he heard, even heard of the blind man. Word had gotten to him. And he wanted to know who this Jesus was. Is he the Messiah? Is he the Son of God? Is he who he says he is? Is he who he says the crowd says he is? Can he really do miracles? Is he really the Messiah? Is he really the Son of God? Zacchaeus says, I want to know. I want to know. But he had a couple of problems. First problem was he wasn't popular. <coughs> And he was little. So he couldn't see Jesus because of the crowd. And maybe he didn't want to get mixed in the crowd anyway. The crowd might have liked that. They might have taken advantage of it. So he ran ahead and he climbed up into a sycamore tree. And he sought to see Jesus, but could not because of the crowd, for he was short-statured. But he had not be denied he had a hunger to see the Lord. Do you have a really a hunger to have your needs solved? Do you really want to know if the Lord is real? Then don't let anything stop you. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't use, he could have used his stature for an excuse. He could have used his popularity for an excuse. I don't dare go out in a the crowd. They'll beat me. They'll find some way to hurt me. They don't like me. They're going to talk bad about me. I can't go to church. <laughs> but he was determined to know Jesus and who he was. So he ran ahead and climbed up, became a spectacle. This rich man becomes a spectacle climbing into a sycamore tree for Jesus. Are you willing to be a spectacle for Jesus? Amen. Now, some say he was hiding in the tree. This sycamore tree has low hanging branches that go kind of horizontal, so it made it convenient for him to climb. He was able to climb up. I don't know if he was hiding or not. He was certainly looking for an advantage for him where he could see and hear Jesus. But it's amazing. Jesus is just passing through, right? Right? You really think so? Yeah. You don't think Jesus didn't know where he was going when he was out there yeah. with that blind man? Yeah. He knew that blind man was there. He knew that blind man needed him. And he knew right where Zacchaeus was too. And he comes to him. And he saw him, but he could not come to the crowd. So he ran ahead, climbed into a sycamore tree to see him where he was going to pass that way. So Zacchaeus <coughs> figured he had it all figured out. <coughs> But Jesus knew right where he was. In verse 5 it says, And when Jesus came to the place, when he came, some commentators, to the spot where Zacchaeus knew it was, where God, Jesus knew where Zacchaeus was, he stopped, just like he did with the blind man. He stopped everywhere. <coughs> and he looks up at Zacchaeus. And he says, Zacchaeus, come down here immediately. It's amazing. Come down here now. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and he said to Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. Now, listen to these words. For today, for today, I must stay at your house. Wow. Amen. What did he mean by that? Was he talking about his physical house? No, he's talking about his heart. You see, he knew his heart. Jesus not only knew where he was, he knew his name. Yeah. Had they ever yeah. been introduced? No. No. Have you ever been introduced to Jesus? No, but I can guarantee you, he knows your name. That's right, isn't that? And he knows whether you're on a curb or a roadside crying out in desperation. 
because of your blindness. And he knows if you're hiding in a tree. He knows what limb you're on. He knows what leaf you're hiding behind. He not only knows where you're at, he knows you by name. Amen. And most importantly, he knows what you need. That's right. Amen. Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. He's talking to a man who's usually in charge. He's a master. He's a chief tax collector. He's used to giving the orders. But now Jesus, in the authority of God Almighty, through the power of the Holy Spirit, stops at Zacchaeus' location, looks up at him right in the face, and Zacchaeus, make haste. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Some of you out there need to know that Jesus knows right where you're at. In spite of whatever pain you may be in or dark place you may be in or depression you may be in, whatever your situation may be with all that's going on in the world, confused as you may be, God knows where you're at, whether you're on a curb somewhere, a roadside, or in a tree hiding. God knows where you're at. He loves you. He wants nothing more than you to love him back. God Amen. loves you. You, and he knows you by name. You matter to him. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And he knows what you need. And more importantly, he desires to set you free. Amen. He desires to heal you. He desires to touch you. He desires to love you. Let him love you. To Zacchaeus' credit, he comes down, he obeys the Lord. Isn't it interesting? Here's a man that goes from curiosity. Curiosity to absolutely obedience. A man of authority and position. But he lays it all on the line. Because he hears the voice of Jesus. Jesus is calling Zacchaeus. Come down, make haste. Maybe Jesus is calling you today. Frank, George, Henry, Mary, Helen, whatever it may be. Jesus is saying, come. Come now. Make haste. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Come down to me and I will give you rest. Wow. You see, I know where you're at. I know you by name. And I know what you need. And I have the power to heal you, whatever your need may be. Come to me, all ye that are laden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Wow. Zacchaeus comes down, climbs out of the tree as fast as he can get there, and he comes to the Lord and he takes him to his house. I think the house represents both his heart and his home. Because it's interesting that later on in this passage, his whole house is saved because of Zacchaeus' decision. But of course the world doesn't want to see the sinner come to the Lord. The world knows that, that you've been bound by this or bound by that. The world knows you by reputation. The world knows your history. They know that you've been a thief, maybe a big thief, maybe a rotten thief, maybe a turncoat, maybe dishonest, maybe a liar, maybe a cheat, whatever the need may be. The world knows and immediately the world starts to accuse. Isn't that the devil's job? Mm -hmm. The accuser of the brethren. So he starts to point out all of his shortcomings and say, look at Jesus. He's going to be the house. He's going to the house of a sinner. Thank God he came to this sinner's house. Amen. Thank God he came to this sinner's house. Thank God he came to this sinner's house. 
How about you? Did he come to your house? Oh, yeah. He's not prejudiced. He simply wants to love you. Amen. And he wants you to love him back. Yes, amen. Don't you just love him? Oh, yeah. He just comes no matter what. Zacchaeus was a stinker, a thief, a turncoat. He had other thieves and turncoats under him. He was a chief sinner. But Jesus loved him enough to stop the parade. Look up to where he was hiding or his vantage point. And let Zacchaeus know, Zacchaeus, I know where you're at. And I know you by name. You matter to me. Come down here because I must go to your house today. Wow. Amen. Wow. Today. Zacchaeus, today is a day of your salvation. Today, I'm going to set you free. Today, you're going to get rid of the guilt and the bondage of what you have done. Today, you're going to make recompense. Today. Today is a day of your salvation. How about you? How about you out there? Cal, come to your guitar if you would. How about you? You know, the crowd mocks him. The fact that he goes to his house. But immediately, Zacchaeus does something remarkable. Almost sounds like the Psalmist 139. He says, Lord, look. Look, Lord. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I'll restore full time, four times. Amen. You see, when God saves somebody, when God redeems somebody, there's more than just words that go on. Mm -hmm. There should be a change. Yes, amen. amen. Zacchaeus went from greedy to generous. Amen. He went from unsaved to being saved. He went from unsaved to being redeemed. Yes, amen. amen. And it caused a reaction in his life that made an absolute physical change. I wonder what those people thought who were talking about him and saying, Jesus is going to the house of the sinner. And Zacchaeus said, by the way, I took $10 from you. I'm going to give you 40 back. I wonder what they thought when he did that. <laughs> I'll bet those two-faced hypocrites had to eat some words. Oh yeah, Because Zacchaeus became a billboard for the glory and the grace of God. Yes. He became an advertisement for God's mercy and God's grace. Yes. He went to the house of the sinner. Aren't you glad that God comes Amen. to the house of yes. the sinner? How many Amen. of you are glad that he comes Amen. to the house of the sinner? Thank you, Lord. How many of you are glad yes. that he comes to the house of the sinner? How many of you are glad that he comes to the house of the sinner? From whom all blessings flow. Is Zacchaeus says, Lord, look, look. So the challenge is this to you. Whether you be on the curb, roadside, or in a tree, God knows where you're at. That's right. Amen. He's calling you by name. Yes, thank you, Lord. He knows what you need, and he'll give you what you need. Yes, thank you. And if he's given you what you need, are you willing to do what Zacchaeus said? What Zacchaeus did? Are you willing to say, Lord, look. Look at my life. Because of what you have done for me, this is what I feel like you want me to do for everybody else. Amen. Yes. Wow. He made a change. He made a change. And Jesus said, today. Today. And Jesus said to him, today. Salvation has come to this house. Yes, amen. Not just to Zacchaeus. You see, because you influence other people. 
You influence other people, mom and dad. You influence other people, young couple. You influence other people. They're watching your lives. Mm -hmm. You don't think the community wasn't influenced by what Zacchaeus did? Mm -hmm. Woo! Amen. They had to shut their mouths. They had to be wow. <laughs> The blind man was one miracle. Zacchaeus was another miracle. Not the same kind of miracle at all, but every bit as amazing and as astonishing. Zacchaeus became a billboard. They both become billboards yes. for the glory, the mercy, the grace of God. Amen. What are you? What are you? What kind of billboard are you for the Lord? Do you dare say what Zacchaeus said, Lord, look at me. Because of what you've done for me, this is what I'm going to do for you. Wow. And Jesus said this, salvation today, salvation has come into your heart. Remember the words that Jesus said, today I must go to your house. And then here Jesus says, today salvation has come to your house. You see, it was important for Jesus. Then Jesus knew the timing. We celebrate Pentecost today as the Spirit moves, and the Spirit is moving right now. And to be in God's timing is to be in God's will. Amen. And it's the Holy Spirit that you sense and feel right now here in this building and head home. And if you need to make a decision, Jesus is listening. If you need God, if you're in some dark place, if you're in some desperate place, if you're lost, if you're confused, if you're lost and undone, God is just waiting for you to cry to him. He knows where you're at. He knows what you need. And he's willing to set you free. Amen. Thank you. Will you allow him to love you? Yes. Will you accept his love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you're out there and you want to make a decision for Christ, if you're here, I would like to every head bowed and every eye shut. And I'm going to ask you if you'd like Jesus to touch you, if you need Jesus, if you want to cry out to the Lord, Lord, I need your help, whatever it may be, just raise your hand. Nobody else is looking. I'm the only one seeing. I see several hands already. Lord, I need you. I see all those hands. I, Lord, I need your help. I'm desperate. Show me, Lord. If you're out there online watching, God's speaking to you too. You can raise your hand. Cry out to the Lord. Lord knows you. He knows you. He loves you. He knows where you're at, whether you're on a curbside or whether you're on a branch in a tree. He knows how desperate you are. He knows how sincere you are. If you want to cry out to the Lord this morning, pray this prayer with me. Lord, I love you. I know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Forgive me of all my shortcomings. Renew me. Renew a right spirit within me. Through the Holy power of the Holy Spirit, minister to me. Let your presence be known. I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. I accept you as Lord and Master of my life. And I'll serve you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sing with us. What do we have with it? In the presence
Just let him love you. Accept his love. blind man on the roadside or like Zacchaeus in the tree Lord of both needy people and we are a needy people Lord touch those Lord that are out there in a dark place minister to those that are confused Lord bring joy bring completeness bring peace in Jesus name Amen Lord bless you. You have with you. It's one of those busy days. Also communion Sunday. So you have with you a tricky little set that you need to peel back a little piece of cellophane to get to the cracker first of all. It is our custom that the first Sunday of each month we celebrate the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. So we take the cracker in our hand. If you've had a chance to peel that back now. And he said, this is my body which was broken for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Then the scripture says that he took the cup also. And he said, this is the blood of the New Testament. This is my blood, which is spilt for the remission of your sins. As often as you do this, do the remembrance of me. Stand with me. Just a little bit of how great thou art. <clears throat> Is the Lord great? Yes. <clears throat> this is a song I like to sing. I call it Full Throttle. You know what that means? That means all out. Loud. <laughs> or loud. How great thou art. Let us sing my soul.
Oh, oh, oh.